<laughs> Welcome back to the Nerdwin channel. So today I'm going to review and at least talk about a guide scope. And this guide scope here, this is the SV Bony, it's a 40 millimeter guide scope. It's probably the most versatile guide scope that I have ever seen or used. So it's it's an interesting item. So one of the ways that I use my refractor is, you know, with an eyepiece and so forth for visual stuff. Just the camera and the focal reducer comes off and this guy goes in its place. Now, there's no like pointing solution system for this scope mount, you know, because there's no three star alignment system. However, like if you've seen my review about the AM5, there's a couple different ways you do it. And my favorite way actually is to use my ASI Air hooked up to this guide scope right here and basically use this as a plate solver to get very, very exact pointing of the scope. Now, one of the cool things about this guide scope is that you can actually adjust it, okay? It's got these set screws all the way around it that allow you to point it at a very specific spot and basically sight it in with your scope so that, you know, you can use it as an accurate pointing solution. And one of the nice things about this here particular guide scope is that not only are these set screws very beefy like I, I have other scopes that have these and they're like half the thread size okay they're very chintzy and uh, pathetic I would say <laughs> this guy they're really big and beefy and on top of that there's nice little locks here so that it doesn't get jarred or messed up and I've been able to take this thing apart and put it back together again and basically have it just about spot on for visual use at least. So yeah, I really like these little set screws that allow me to kind of like aim this thing. It's kind of a unique feature. It's not too many guide scopes have this. So now I've seen many, many people miss this on guide scopes. Pretty much all guide scopes have an ability to find focus. And with this guy, there's this large ring up here, which is actually kind of easy to see which once you loosen it allows you to basically focus it. And there's even little gradation markings here, which allow you to kind of like r write down the number or maybe highlight one that kind of works with a specific setup and go to that very quickly. Also, the threading on this, it's a little bit coarser, which is actually kind of nice because it allows you to get to focus faster. And then you lock it back down like that. Now, another cool thing about this thing is that these little segment rings here, all of these come apart, which allow you to use this thing in a number of different ways. Uh, now, it, and, but let me go back to focus really quick here for a second. So when I focus, I actually set this thing just about all the way out, and then I just move this thing in and out by eye while looking at the screen, and then when I get it close, I lock it down. Because with a guide scope, you really don't need to have perfect focus. You know, so that's kind of another reason why I appreciate the more coarse threading on the objective for focus. Now, another reason why I screw this thing all the way out is basically to kind of get this thing further into the housing so that it's not hanging out here. Because I've seen guys with setups like this where it's hanging out here. And as you can see, it's very easy for this thing to actually flex and move, which would, of course, wreck your guiding. Now, something else that's really neat about this thing is that because you can remove these sections, you can basically get it short enough so that you can stick in a right angle eyepiece and then use it as basically a finder scope if you want to do it the really old fashioned way. Now, I would suggest getting an eyepiece that has crosshairs in it, but yeah, this is kind of something that you have an option for. I think you have to remove two sections, so these two right here, you would actually you would remove this large section and move this guy up because it has the little set screw here to kind of hold it in place. And that allows you to use this thing with a diagonal, which is really cool. Now, one other way that you can use it is actually just to stick a diagonal straight into it. And these here threads, by the way, are M42 threads. So you can actually add more extensions to this if you wanted to. And, you know, there we go. This is a zoom eye piece. So that's kind of like another way that you can use it. All right, so last but not least, I'm gonna show you something that this guide scope can do that no other guide scope could really do well, okay. Uh, there are other guide scopes, of course, that you have M42 threads on them that you can 
thread a camera on like this. However, they're so flimsy and I just, I don't think they would be able to hold a camera, especially not a cool one like this. Maybe you could hold one of these and image with it, with a filter wheel, but you know, not, not a cool camera. Now, if you were to try this, now there are some caveats to this. Number one, this is not an aposcope, okay? This is just an ED, I'm sorry, it's just a doublet, okay? And it's basically an acromat. And that means that it will have chromatic aberrations. However, if you're shooting with a mono camera, which is the way that I would suggest you do this if you were to attempt this, and with a mono camera, you can adjust for each filter and therefore kind of cancel out the chromatic aberration. And also with narrowband, and I've proved this on my channel and other people have proven this too, that you don't need an apo scope for narrowband imaging because you're, you're imaging this tiny little sliver of the, the color spectrum that, you know, chromatic aberrations don't really matter. So, yeah. If you really wanted to, you know, experiment with like a really low cost wide field setup to kind of like maybe experiment, maybe just kind of explore the heavens and hydrogen alpha or oxygen, just kind of looking for targets that maybe are not cataloged, here you go. Okay. And, and like I said, you know, these, these set screws are nice and beefy, which means that it could do this. Okay. I, I have other scopes that, you know, that in theory have the capability of doing this, but those guide scopes just, they're too dinky. Okay. You know, which, which actually brings up something. So the one complaint that I have about this, you know, cause this is a review is just the weight. I think it's a little bit heavier than it kind of needs to be. Uh, I, I looked at these different segments and a lot of the housings are a little bit thicker than I think they probably need to be. However, uh, like I said, it, it, this thing's a tank, okay? <laughs> it really is because of that. Now, if you're thinking, if you're wondering, okay, what kind of scopes can I hook up to this? Now you've seen it on my 120 millimeter Apo, okay? My SV Body 122. It's a big scope, okay? If you were to hook it up to a scope like that, the focal length on this guy is 140 millimeters. In order to have good pixel size for guiding for that, you're gonna need something with fairly small pixels, something like a 290, which I know isn't in production anymore, but uh, you know, that's kind of the pixel size. You need about a 2.1 or 2.9 micron size pixel, pixel in order to, to guide with the scope as big as a 120 millimeter Apple. Certainly it'll be fine with smaller scopes down to like 60 millimeters. So that, that's kind of your range, you know, anything from 60 millimeter refractor up to 120 millimeter refractor, this guy will guide with adequately because of its, its focal length. And, but, but for the bigger end, you need like a longer focal length. Now, if you're using something like, this is the latest camera from SV Boney. I'm sorry, not SV Boney, CWO. Got SV Boney hat on. So uh, the 220mm, it's got larger pixels. Uh, with this guide scope and this camera, I would stick to a scope that's maybe 100 millimeter refractor or smaller, okay? Just because of the larger pixels on this guy. So I think that kind of sums up just about everything that I could think of about this guy. And, and like I said, I mean, this thing has got so many bells and whistles on it. It's got a, there's a standard quarter 20 tripod thread here. So you could hook this thing up to a tripod if you wanted to. And yeah, it's a, like I said, it's a very full featured scope that does a lot of things and, and it really is built like a tank. And yeah, you could kind of use this thing in many, many different ways. And that's kind of really its biggest appeal is the fact that it's so freaking versatile. So let me give you yet another way that you could use this thing. So let's say you want just a laser pointer for your scope. And uh, now I realize this is a red one. Okay, you can get these in green, I believe, but this is, a, this is one that fits in a quarter inch eyepiece. You can stick that in there, okay? And then actually just screw off the objective. <laughs> and use this as a laser pointer, 